Good afternoon, everyone. Hope that you are having a great afternoon. I've had a great week and that our God has blessed you far beyond what you can see. I know he has me and much more than what I deserve for sure. It's that time of week again. Uh, we are here to have our wow time, Wisdom on Wednesday, as we continue our study through the book of Proverbs. Today we're going to start uh, chapter 13. We're going to go through four verses, if time allows us to do so. So I encourage you, pick up your Bible, uh, turn over to Proverbs, uh, find chapter 13, and we're going to begin in verse 1. Let us begin. It says, A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Let me ask you this question. Was there ever a time in your life where you uh, got to a certain age to where your parents were not the smartest people in the world in your eyes? In my experience in youth ministry, this seems to roughly happen for most people somewhere about the fifth or sixth grade. I'm not sure what happens exactly in young people's minds, but it seems it's roughly that age that they go, hmm, mom and dad have lost their minds. They used to be very smart. I used to look to them for knowledge, but now they're idiots. They don't know anything. And I have to supply them with wisdom because in the fifth or sixth grade, that is when a person is the wisest. And, and they know a great deal of knowledge. Okay, at least in their heads, they do. And then something happens on later in life. It, it seems like it usually happens somewhere maybe in college, maybe right after college, suddenly mom and dad have become smart again. They lost it for this period of time, but now there they are. Look, they got their wisdom back. It's an amazing thing that happens. And when I read this proverb, I, I think about that just a little bit, because here's, here's the point of the proverb. A wise son hears his father's instruction. Why does a wise son hear his father's instruction? Because a father has more wisdom, you would think, in most cases, than his son would have. The father has lived longer. The father has gained more knowledge. He has lived more experiences. He has that wisdom if he has walked with God. And so if you have a father that has walked with God and continually walks with God, listen to him and become wise yourself because you are building upon that foundation that the Father already has and the Father is giving to you. I think that this is an important reason for parents to make sure that you are spending that time with your kids, not just to educate them in the ways of the world, though there's some benefit to that, but also make sure that they know who God is. Make sure they know who their Lord and Savior is. Make sure they know His Word and how to read it, how to study it, how to apply it to their lives. And thus they will have that wisdom. But a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. It seems that the proverb writer here is talking about a son that does not listen to his father. That thinks his father is probably an idiot. His father just doesn't know. Or his father just wants to ruin all the fun. Or his father is just out of touch with reality. This is a son that would be described as a fool. So let us as parents make sure that we are given our children wisdom that God has shared with us, that our children can build upon that. And hopefully, God willing, our children will be considered a wise son or a wise daughter. Notice verse 2 with me. From the fruit of his mouth, a man eats what is good, but the desire of the treacherous is for violence. Once again, seems like the proper writer is talking about what comes out of the mouth. 
whether it's good, whether it's bad. He says, from the fruit of his mouth, a man eats what is good. Whenever something good comes out of a man's mouth, there's benefit there, not only for the man, but, but also for those who hear it as well. But the desire of the treacherous or, or the wicked or the unrighteous is for violence. The things that come out of their mouth is violence. Okay, it, it's basketball season. Uh, professionally, college, high school, uh, even, even younger kids. Here at the Panhandle Church of Christ, we have a gym in our family center, and right now the school's gyms are closed to the younger kids in town. And so their teams have asked if they could use our gym, which we gladly allow them to do. But when I think about this, I think about sometimes going to basketball games or football games or baseball, whatever you want to go to, and sometimes there are people in the stands that get a little too into it. And maybe they're shouting things at the referees that just are not encouraging. Or maybe they're shouting at the coaches things that do not build up the coaches. And sometimes you hear them even yelling at players uh, that would not be considered many things, but, but definitely not encouraging uh, to the players as well. And it doesn't matter whether the players are professional, college, high school, or even third graders. Uh, sometimes these kind of things happen. And so once again, you know, what comes out of our mouth, it affects people, whether it's for good or whether it is for violence. And verse 3 kind of carries on this thought, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Okay? I used to say several years ago, to, to especially the boys that would be in my youth group, that a wise man knows when to keep silent. And, and the reason I would say that is because sometimes they would want me to say things to certain other people, maybe especially in the youth group, that they thought I needed to say to them, but would not have done any good, would not have brought any encouragement, and it would have only caused uh, fights, really. And, and it would have caused, you know, hurt feelings. And so a wise man knows when to keep silent. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. Know when to talk. Know when to keep silent. This is what a wise man does. He knows exactly when to say something, and he knows when not to say something. I think especially of Jesus in this case. We have many examples in the New Testament, in the Gospels, where people were trying to trap Jesus with his own words. And sometimes they would ask him a question, and what would he do? He would respond with a question himself. But other times, he'd just keep silent. He wouldn't answer. And there was wisdom in that. And I think there's wisdom for us in that as well. Let us choose our words carefully that we speak. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Okay, uh, One author put it this way. This proverb des describes someone of tight lips and a big mouth. Which one are you? Which one do you want to be friends with? Would you like to be friends with someone who's a big mouth and anything you tell them, they immediately go out and they tell the world about it? They're posting on Facebook, well, you won't believe what Leighton said. Or they're texting somebody else and like, oh, Leighton said this. And blah, 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 blah. Let us guard our mouths and thus preserve life. Let us not open wide our lips and come to ruin. Okay, last proverb I want to share with you uh, on this day that God has blessed us with. Verse 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. I'd like to apply this to us in, in, in a spiritual way, if you will. Okay? 
Do you have desires to grow closer to God? Do you have desires to be holy? Do you have desires to, to be a better Christian? The soul of the slugger craves and gets nothing. The idea here is that a slugger wants things, but he's not willing to put in the work to get it. But on the other hand, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied, why? Because they're diligent about it. And when I think about this, and I think about it in a spiritual way, there is something to be said about someone who is diligent spiritually, that they want to grow in the wisdom of God. They seek that wisdom. They, they, they want it so bad that they are working for it, not in that we are working for our salvation, but that we are hungering and thirsting after our God. And so we spend time in His Word. We meditate upon his word. We are spending time in prayer with God. Maybe we are even fasting and, and some of the other spiritual disciplines that help us to be able to grow and to know who God is. I think God does reward those who seek after him and he grants us wisdom when we do so. But when we are lazy spiritually, we might crave that, oh, I want to be holy. Oh, I want to know God more. But no, I'm, I, I'd rather go play basketball. I'd rather go golfing. I'd rather go fishing. I'd rather, you know, be sewing or, or whatever else many people do instead of spending that time with God. So let us not be the sluggard spiritually, but let us be diligent. Let us put in the effort. Let us put in the time that is required for us to be able to benefit by being diligent. I hope and pray that you're having a good day. I hope and pray that you continue to have a good week. Uh, the sun is out here in Panhandle. It feels good. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just a beautiful day that our God has truly blessed us with. I hope and pray you have a great week. Remember, God loves you, and so do I, and God willing. We'll see you next week as we continue to work our way through the Proverbs here, and especially chapter 13. God bless.